I'm going to introduce you to my late 2012 iMac 27 inch. And today we're going to move from 14.7.1 to 15.3 using Open Core Legacy Patcher. This particular unit has a 3.4 gigahertz quad core Intel Core i7, has the built-in GeForce GTX graphics card, 32 gigs of RAM, and it's running Sonoma 14.7.1. And you can see that we do have a software update available. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Well, I have to say this is a bit frustrating that I cannot seem to get the checking for updates to work to get me to 15.3, which was the whole point of this video to begin with. So we're gonna skip back to Open Core Legacy Patcher and we're gonna do it the other way by installing it to this Vansui drive. It's way bigger than what it needs to be. It's 128 gigabytes, but uh, we're gonna get it installed on this because I won't have to wait as long as a standard USB drive. So let's cut to that. And there's our Open Core Legacy Patcher 2.2.0. So what we need to do, we've already installed and built the Open Core. We've done that in the prior video. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the Mac OS installer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that button and we're gonna say download Mac OS installer. There is 15.3. Download the file. We've downloaded the installer. Now we're validating the installer before we actually put that on our USB drive. And now we're extracting the Mac OS installer. So the application has finished extracting the installer and have asked to continue and create the Mac OS installer. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Select the local and that's gonna be this. And then it's gonna say it didn't find any disks. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this into the necessary drive and we're gonna see if it finds it. Give it a moment, search for disks again. There's our drive and it's going to say, hey, all the data is going to be lost. Is that what you want to do? I'm going to go yes. And there you go. Because we're using this sudo SSD drive, uh, this shouldn't take very long. We're now validating the integrity of the installer. All right. Now that we've created that installer on that USB drive, it's asking if we want to install OpenCore. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And we're going to say install to disk. It's gonna ask us which disk we're gonna do the install to. We're gonna do that to the 128. And then we're gonna add uh, this information to the EFI partition. And it's gonna build that partition for us. And then it's going to ask us to reboot and hold down the option key, if I remember correctly. Yep, it hold down the option key and select open core boot EFI. And we wanna boot up off of the USB drive. So let's give this a shot. Wait for the tone. Hold down the option key. So I'm going to say we're gonna boot up off of the USB and then we're going to install Sequoia. All right, here we go. We've booted up off of the USB drive. We're gonna install Sequoia. So we're just gonna use the down arrow. Oh, maybe not, maybe use the mouse. Maybe not. There it goes. And install, continue. There's our Sequoia splash screen. Please note that when you click that continue button, it will not immediately get to this second screen, the agreed to uh, section for the software license for a few moments. So don't panic. We're gonna click okay and then okay. We're gonna select the internal drive and here we go. We're gonna go through the first part of the installation of Mac OS Sequoia on this late 2012 iMac. All right, we've had our first reboot of the Mac OS Sequoia installer. We're going to let this run and, and it's going to take about 29 minutes, it says. Okay, the second reboot has finally took place. I did have one problem. I will discuss that later in this video. see exactly how long it took to build it but we're gonna say it was about an hour and but I had a problem during the installation 
where it disconnected from the USB. And that was using one of the USB ports on the front, which I should not have done. I should have plugged it into the back of the unit. So just know that if you are upgrading using a USB thumb drive, don't use a hub, use one of the USB ports on the back. <laughs> I forgot to have my mic on through most of this video. How embarrassing. But anyways, let's finish off what we just did. We installed the latest version of Mac OS 15.3 using OpenCore Legacy Patcher. And that version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher is 2.2.0. Now let's look at some of the findings that I got from this one. So if you're considering upgrading the same iMac late 2012, in 14.7.1, we had a single core score of 830 and a multi-core of 3,327. Looking at the 15.3 stats, we had the single core score of 877, went up a tiny bit, and multi-core 3,327. What about metal and the graphics card? 47.45, running version 14 of the Mac OS, and 15.3, 47.60. This is where things got interesting. We used Cinebench R23 is what we used. When we were running 14.7.1, we had a multi-core score of 2,775 and a single core of 651 with a multi-processor ratio of 4.26. But if we look at this score, we notice that it went up multi-core at 3,442 and our single core, 775. So both of those went up and the multiplier actually increased to 4.4 is really what I should be saying. This is the third time I ran this test since the upgrade and I'm still getting the same scores. What happened between here in the version 14.7.1 to 15.3. If you know, leave a comment. I'd like to know because I have no clue. I mean, we're running an operating system that's not even designed for the iMac late 2012. So anyway, so there you go. You got those. And then I did a video test, which is just my basic final cut uh, template for, hey, what's next? And uh, it took 55.5 seconds in 14.7.1. And if we look at 15.3, it took 55 seconds. So I shaved off a half of a second. So overall, Geekbench numbers pretty much stayed the same. Final Cut export time pretty much stayed the same. But that Cinebench score, very interesting that it would jump up that much higher between the old to the new operating system. But there you go. Well, thanks for watching today. If you liked what you saw, take a moment and give me a thumbs up and share this episode with others. Sorry about the audio again. To be notified when I post new content, click that subscribe button and bell notification icon. Feel free to watch one of my other videos here or here. And until next time, I'll see you again for another episode of Hey, What's Next?